Ball tracking is one of the most important aspects of being a consistent tennis player. But there might be a visual skill that's even more important because we see players like Djokovic and Andy Murray and Serena Williams, amazingly consistent players, making clean contacts, hitting fantastic shots while their head and their eyes are looking down the other end of the court. So there's gotta be something else that's going on that allows them to do that without watching the ball all the way onto the strings. So that's gonna be the topic for today's video. I'm gonna be explaining what that visual skill is and some of the things that you can do to train it so that you can be a more consistent player. I hope you find the video helpful. If you do, it'd be great if you give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, really appreciate it if you could do that as well. So what we're talking about here is visual prediction. It's visual prediction that allows players like Murray and Djokovic and Serena to be able to make clean contact with the ball while they're not even looking at it. They are able to gather enough information about the ball to know exactly where it's gonna be so that they can still hit a great shot without watching it all the way onto the strings. Now, before I go into a little bit more detail and talk about visual prediction and talk about how you can start to train it, what I'm not saying is don't try and watch the ball onto the strings. It is still my firm belief that you want to do everything that you can to develop the ability to track the ball with your eyes and your head so that your eyes and head are lined up with the strings and contact at the moment that you strike the ball and trying to keep your head there for a fraction of a second longer after you've made contact in the same way that Federer does or someone like Medvedev does and now Alcaraz does this really well as well. So that is what I highly advise you do but we do have to acknowledge that there is this other visual skill of prediction going on that allows players to be able to hit great shots without watching the ball onto the strings. And what you really wanna do is develop great visual prediction and the ability to track the ball. The combination of both of those things is gonna give you the best possible result in terms of consistency. So I'm gonna place a video over here that's gonna help you with the ball tracking side of things, but what I'm gonna concentrate on for the rest of the video is the visual prediction component. So visual prediction is your ability to read where the ball's going once your opponent's made contact with it and to try and predict exactly where it's going to land so you can move and set up in the right position and that, so you can have a higher likelihood of making a clean contact with the ball. There's a lot of different factors that go into your ability to predict where the ball's going to go. Some of them you're going to need to train on the court, some of them you're gonna to need to train off the court. So we're gonna start by talking about on-court training because really visual prediction develops over a lifetime and over a number of years. Part of what's happening is you're seeing different scenarios on the tennis court over and over again so that as you watch the ball, leave your opponent's strings, you start to develop an understanding of what's gonna happen. So you're trying to pick up on how fast the ball's traveling, what the trajectory's like, so how high is it going, what direction, it's being hit at, what sort of spin is on the ball, and you develop an, an understanding of how those different factors are gonna influence what happens to the ball. You've also got to develop an understanding of how the ball is gonna interact with the court. So you have to gain experience playing on a hard court and on clay courts and on grass courts. And once you've done that enough times, you'll start to understand how the ball is gonna interact with the surface based on the type of shot that was hit, that speed, spin, trajectory stuff, and then combine them together to help you to understand where the ball might arrive so that you can make contact with it. Then you've also got to kind of factor in external variables like how much wind there is. So there's a lot of different things going on that are going to impact your ability on, uh, to predict where the ball is going to go on court. And they're all things that you basically train over the course of time. It's all about repetitions and seeing different situations. But what we've also got to understand is that not all of us are built like world-class tennis players. So there are lots and lots of players out there who've played day in, day out for 20 years and do not develop the visual predictive capacities that you know amazing tennis players develop within 13 or 14 years of starting tennis. So it's not just about the number of repetitions and how much tennis you play. It's also about how your visual system is functioning. And what it's important to understand is that regular people's visual systems don't function in the same way as someone like Murray or Dominic Team. That's how they're able to, to do those things. Now, when it comes to the research, there's no 
concrete version of how we're able to predict where the ball's going. There's ongoing research, they try and figure this stuff out, but at the moment they don't know. So what I'm gonna tell you about is the approach that I use within my own game to improve my visual system and the approach that I use with other players to help them improve how their visual systems are functioning to improve ball prediction. The way that I approach improving visual prediction within my own game is really twofold, and it's an ongoing process for me. I've been working on it now for about six or seven years, and things improved very quickly when I started applying this process, but I'm now learning and discovering new ways to kind of train things which are allowing me to continually make improvements. And I guess the piece of the puzzle that's really happened this year is now I'm finally able to play in shade and shadows. It's something that I absolutely used to suck at, and as soon as there was any strange lighting conditions, I became a terrible tennis player but this year my visual system has finally got to the point where I'm actually able to deal with shadows pretty well so this is an ongoing process and the approach that I use is firstly to find things that aren't working and try and fix problems so when it comes to our visual system there's a lot of different things going on on its most basic level we have got six eye muscles that move our eyes in different directions we've got three nerves that send information to those muscles and we've got multiple different parts of the brain that are involved in eye movements so one of the most important aspects of being able to predict where the ball is going is having good quality eye movements so if any of your eye movements aren't working properly and we can test those with very simple assessments you want to work on correcting them so the first step is going to be making sure your eye movements are nice and efficient so we assess them and then we do simple training exercises to try and address any eye movement issues we can also have problems with our brain's ability to use both images because our eyes are like camera lenses. We've got two camera lenses, we want to point them at the same target, so that's where the eye movements come in, but then our brain needs to be able to use both of those images together to create 3D vision and your ability to judge distance and depth. Because obviously if you can't tell how far things are away, it's gonna be really tricky to see your opponent hit the ball and to know where it's gonna go. And it's gonna be really tricky to set up the right distance from the ball and all that good stuff that you need to be a consistent tennis player. So we can also assess visual suppression. We can assess your ability to use both eyes together. And if you find that one of your eyes is suppressed there are training drills that you can do to start to work on it to hopefully improve your ability to judge distance and depth and to not have visual suppression so we've got things like that where we're basically trying to find things that are going wrong and do our best that we can to fix them we can't always fix everything and make everything perfect because we're on about the human body here but in my experience on my own body and working with lots of players we can normally make pretty good improvements with most things. So that's kind of the first part to it. The second part to it is gonna be, we haven't necessarily got a problem, say that we never had a problem or we've now fixed all our problems. The second part to it is just training the parts of the brain that deal with visual spatial awareness because we literally have parts of the brain that are dedicated to this. There are kind of three key areas within the brain that are really important for your ability to see where things are and understand how far they are away from you and how far they are in relation to everything else. And when you understand what these parts of the brain do, you can start to create really simple training drills that if you work at them consistently and you progress them over time, can dramatically improve your ability to predict where the ball's going. So within my own training and the people I work with training, we use a lot of different chart drills, switching between charts in different ways. And because of the neurology behind the scenes, this can be a really powerful way to train your ability to improve ball prediction. So that's the, the kind of two-step approach that I have taken with my own game, and it's been very successful. Find problems and try and fix them, and then just train the systems and the areas that allow you to you know, have really good spatial awareness, and it's been very effective. And by combining both of those elements, so obviously the on-court work, you want to start to be consciously aware. So if you aren't in the habit of trying to predict where the ball's going, sometimes you do actually have to think about it consciously. Combine that with training your visual system to find and fix problems, and then train the parts of the, the brain that deal with spatial awareness, 
that can be a really effective combination for helping you to improve your visual prediction so that you know where the ball's going. And of course, like we talked about earlier, if we add that to good quality ball tracking, that's when you're really gonna to start to improve your consistency. And the wonderful news in all this is, when you work on your ball tracking, you're gonna be training your eye movements so the visual training kind of goes together. The stuff that improves your visual prediction is also really good for improving ball tracking and vice versa. So if you'd like more help with that, I've got a masterclass that's gonna go into a little bit more detail about this stuff. It's gonna take you through a few different vision assessments. It's actually gonna take you through some coordination assessments as well. It's basically gonna to start to help you figure out what's going on in your body that might be holding you back on court because technique is important, tactics are important, but so is skill and ability. And that's what this masterclass is gonna talk about. I'll place a link down there so you can check it out and I'll place a link up there so you can have a look in case you are interested. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on what we've talked about today. Does it make sense to you? Um, do you think that visual prediction might be part of why you're lacking consistency or is this something you would like to work on? Leave me a comment down below and I'll get back to you as quick as I can.